Sir Lediaith was chief of the tribes of the island of Britain. His companion was Penardim, the beautiful. They had two sons, Bendigaidran and Manawidan. When Llyr was captured by the chieftain Erosoid, the ransom demanded was that Penardim would spend one night in the bed of Erosoid. For the love of Llyr, she agreed. Later, Llyr and Erosoid met in a fair fight, and Erosoid was sent to be judged by Aram, Lord of the Dead. In due time, Penardim bore twin sons from her forced union. They were Nisien and Evnisien. When three summers had passed, Penardim again bore a child, a daughter named Branwen, who would become the fairest maid in the land. But Evnisien had his father's heart. In time, Bendigaidran became king of the island of Britain. Though he kept no companion for long, he had one son, Karadak. Bendigaidran was a wise and just king, and also a giant, so big that it was said that no ship could carry him and no house could give him shelter. One day, the ships of the Irish visited the shore. On board was Matholuch, king of Ireland. He came asking for Branwen to be his companion. Bendigaidran and his chiefs considered this and determined that here was a way to put an end to the feuding between the two islands, and it was agreed upon. But Evnician was not in the council being away on an errand, and he knew nothing of this. During the three days of celebration that accompanied the hand fasting, a lone Irish herdsman was watching over the horses when Evnician came upon him. He asked whose were these fine animals, and when he heard the Irishman speak, he was filled with anger. Believing that his land was under attack, he killed the herdsman, then cruelly mutilated the horses. When word of this outrage came to Matholuch, he and his companions knew a terrible rage and humiliation. They prepared to leave. Bendigaidran tried to make peace, but there was only one honour price that would satisfy Matholuch but Bendigaidran would not deliver up the head of his brother. So another gift was offered and accepted. Bendigaidran possessed the cauldron of rebirth. When any die, if they are put into this cauldron, they would return to life. This gift was accepted. Though Amergin, the oldest and wisest of the Druids of Ireland, cons counselled that none in Ireland should know of the shame put on them or of the cauldron. So a tonguehead, a fate, was put on all, that none should speak of these things. So did Branwen enter Ireland, and peace and prosperity reigned for three years. A son was born to her, Gwern was his name, and this gave Matholuch and his counsellors much to think on. Under the laws of the old tribes, there was neither marriage nor father's right. Children were the gift of the mothers, and so the king was always the son of the old king's sister. By the laws of the ancient harmonies, Gwern was now heir to the island of Britain, not Karadak. When news of this was sent to Bendigaidran, he, Manawidan and Nisien saw only mutual peace and prosperity coming from such a thing. But Evnisien, whose heart was always filled with anger and bitterness, was chief among those who opposed the son of Irish soil ruling over them. Then Amergin died, and the tonguehead was broken. 
Then was the shame of the Irish and the knowledge of the cauldron spoken of. The chiefs turned the heart of Matholuch against Branwen until he sent her from his presence. She was locked in a room all night and sent to work as a drudge in the kitchen by day where she was severely beaten. One day she found a small wren fallen from its nest and took it secretly to her room. There she fed and nursed the wren and taught it speech. When it was strong enough, she sent it with a message to her brother. Great was the anger of Bendigaitvran and his brothers when they heard the message of the wren. He amassed a great army, and the masts of their ships were like a forest upon the sea. They sailed to Ireland, with Bendigaidvran the giant wading through the water before them like a moving mountain. They landed at the mouth of the Boyne, that great river that flows past Tara, where sat Matholuch. When Matholuch saw this, his coward's heart failed him, and he sent for Branwen. He promised her he would restore her to her child, and she would reign with him in Tara, if she would turn aside the anger of her brothers. She spurned him then, and told him that she would rather spend an eternity in the kitchen than one night in the bed of a mouse heart. But Branwen was a peacemaker, and she did not want blood spilled, so she told Matholuch how the anger of her brother may be turned. She said that she and Gwern should be escorted to her brother's camp, and there was one thing that Bendigaidran had always secretly yearned for. Never had he dwelt in a house, and he would not use the wealth of his chiefs for his own ends, but if Matholuch would have a house built large enough to house Bendigaidran, this would be an honour price. So it came to be that there was peace, while Branwen and Gwern were reunited with her brothers, and the great house was built. Joy was in the hearts of the peacemakers, but some were angry that they had been so easily bought. Chief among these was Evnician, who knew no joy unless he was spilling the blood of enemies, real or imagined. When the house was completed, Matholuch and his host came and bade Bendigaidvran welcome into his home on Irish soil. All left their weapons outside and entered the great hall of this house, where Bendigaidvran sat at the head of a feasting table before a great fire that burned mightily in a massive fireplace. As the revelries wore on, Branwen brought forth the young Gwern. His uncles held him fondly and passed the infant to each other. But when he came to Evnician, Evnician threw the child into the fireplace, breaking his skull. Manawithan leapt into the flames, but neither his strength nor his magic were soon enough to save the child. So Evnician added Kinslayer to his crimes. The Irish rose up in anger and horror. None having weapons, they fought with bare hands until they fled through the night, vowing vengeance. So did Evnician bring about the war he lusted for. The next day the Irish army returned and a great battle was fought all day. Many died on both sides, and none could claim a victory. But that night, a great red glow could be seen on Tara. It was the cauldron of rebirth, giving life to the fallen Irish. The next day, the Irish undead were the first into battle, and now the tide turned against Bandigaidran. The next day saw them again facing the undead, and Nician was killed. Evnician saw what he had done, and so that evening he covered himself in mud and blood, and rolled in amongst the Irish dead and lay still. 
When they came to take his body, thinking him one of their own, they put him into the cauldron. The cauldron was not to take the living and tried to throw him out, but he forced himself to remain until the cauldron burst, and so did his heart. All heard the great crash, and red fragments flew into the sky and fell back to the earth. The cauldron of the gods went back to Aaron, who rightly owned it. Heartsick, Bendigaivran led what was left of his people away. Martholuch would have let them go, but he was always turned by bad counsel, and so he pursued them until they came to a great ravine. There was no way across, so Bendigaivran lay down his body across the ravine, and his army used his body to cross to safety. Ever since then it has been said amongst the Welsh, Tra bod ben bid bont. If you would be a leader, be a bridge. There they rested, unwilling to flee further, until the Irish came around and fell upon them. Then came the last great battle between the two armies. Manawi then met Matholuch on the field, and long was they a duel, until Manawi then prevailed at last. Yet in that last great battle, Bendigaidvran was not to survive. He received a poison spear in the thigh. He lived to see the final victory, but the poison reached his heart and he died. From Harlech, they had brought a golden dish to hold the food of Bendigaidvran, and on that dish they now placed his head as they journeyed back to the boats that would carry them home. Of the host of Bendigaidvran, all that remained were the king's head and seven, who will be remem remembered for as long as the ancient tongue is spoken in this land. They were Manawithan, the king's brother, Taliesin, famed for his many births, Praderi, prince of David, Hylin, son of Gwyn the Ancient, Enoch, Glyniai, and Gridion. The Irish died to the last man.